And then I see this one guy with a kite, which was very unusual, jumping. He was giving this huge jump. I already had my, my gear, but I wasn't able to. I tried uh, to learn by, on my own, and there was nobody here. All right, everyone, welcome to the X-Foils, and I've got uh, Kiko here. Mm. He's joining me today in this fake studio. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what number episode this is, so we'll just say it's uh, Kiko's episode. All right, thank you. So you go by Kiko, right? That's my but, nickname, yeah. And your name is Manuel? Manuel, that's right. <laughs> okay, yeah. Manuel de Mau, Del Mau? Del Mau, yeah, okay. sure. So I've got you here because we're in Puerto Rico, and... You have a huge history here with sailing, uh, kiting, foiling, which is generally where we kind of go to with these sure. conversations. Mm -hmm. um, but you have a huge sailing background and you have an epic house right mm -hmm. in Punta Las Marias. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry for shouting that out to the world. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> um, Ren was here uh, and she talked about your house. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's like a wing paradise, <laughs> right? So and it started as a windsurfing paradise. Yeah, that's right. how I got it. It used to be a guest house. And a, and I, I, I was in a commercial for tourism. Mm -hmm. And it was incredible the amount of people that were writing. They somehow got my there were no emails then. Uh, or I didn't have any. <laughs> and, uh, and people were writing to, just to find out about Puerto Rico and all because of an ad that, that I did with the tourism company. So that's when I thought, you know, I need to get a guest house. I already had a, a shop, a, mm -hmm. a store. So I need to get a, a guest house or something. What, was, what the, was the name of the store? Uh, Vela Surf. Oh, okay. Vela Surf, a long yeah. time ago. Yeah. Uh, eventually I sold it uh, and they kept on it. Uh, but... It and, shut down. And that's when they changed the name to Vela Uno? Well, actually, after eventually you? they bought, yeah, Vela Uno bought Vela Surf. Oh, okay. And they, they threw away their name, no. uh, which, which was a cool name. I still am attached to the name to yeah. Vela Surf. But anyways, we had Club Vela Surf. That was in my house. That's, we, we acquired the house. It was a guest house. And I used to bring people uh, for a week package, giving them lessons. And we had uh, breakfast and lunch. And, and it, was, it was super, super nice, super interesting. Windsurfing. There was no yeah. kiting. There was only yeah. windsurfing. What, what year was this? And this was 85. I bought that house 85. So from there on, maybe four or five years, we had it only six months out of the year. Mm -hmm. we, we did that. The rest of the time, we closed it down, and it was my house in Bella. And how did people, so people were looking for windsurfing, and they... They found your house? I mean, well, I, no, we advertised on the Windsurf magazine. Okay. A long time ago. And you had a name by then? Did people know who you were? Or uh, yes. was that part of it as well? Yeah, because the, the advertising that I did for tourism was because I was involved in the, in the Olympics, mm -hmm. representing Puerto Rico. So, so it was, that's the reason I was on that commercial. Yeah. And I guess, I mean, it, wasn't a, it was a big deal for me, the, yeah. the Olympics, but... Uh, <laughs> But I didn't, I didn't do well or anything. Uh, but but it, was, it really drew a lot of people into knowing me, I guess. Uh, yeah. But more for the ad advertising. It was on Life magazine, Time magazine. So it was a lot of exposure. And, uh, and we could tell. I mean, I, it, was, it was really interesting. And it, and it just, we went uh, with the idea of expanding the, the shop. Mm -hmm. Pretty much the same thing you have now. You yeah. know, you have the, the place on the beach. Well, yeah. That's what we did with windsurfing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm fresh to the island, so I don't, <laughs> I don't know how the scene was back then because I used to, I mean, I've been kiting for a long time, mm -hmm. um, and I used to go to Cabarete, and Puerto Rico was not on the map. It right. just didn't, like, it never even popped into my head well, to go to Puerto Rico to go kiting. Sure. Well, not even see. once, which is strange, and I guess... I mean, Cabaret is a huge scene for, I mean, windsurfing back in the day right. and kiting now. I guess they just, their tourism board really adapted that really sure. hard that, and that, pushed it. That I right? think that's the difference between here and there. Yeah, and I guess the tourism board here, <coughs> Sorry. I mean, they, they put out that commercial mm -hmm. and it did bring windsurfers here. I think so, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely did. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, at that time, we had a really, I mean, a couple of years back, from that commercial, we had really uh, one of the biggest uh, wind, windsurfing Mistral class. Mm -hmm. And that really, 
we were, for like four years, we were the biggest dealer in the U.S. for Mistral boards. We were selling, my guess, I don't remember the exact numbers, but your, easily. Your shop? Our shop. Wow. We were selling easily 30 to 40 boards a month. He, uh, and, and these boards were uh, the big ones, you know, the yeah. Mistral long boards. Uh, they, there was a Mistral class here that was very big, very big. Huh. And that's among the things that I did. I went to the worlds that they had in the Canary Islands and in the Barbados. We went. We were promoting people to go sail to go to, to international events, and I and I went to a lot of them hmm. yeah. for windsurfing. For windsurfing, yeah. yeah. And you were shipping boards around the Caribbean, or that was all no, for that Puerto was all, Rico. All here. Wow, that's and, wild. It's incredible. What a because, market. Yeah. No, no. It, it was unbelievable. I, I, I mean, I see it now how it certainly has progressed because the kite surfing has taken over. I think there's a lot of people that, not, not necessarily the same people. The people I'm talking about are probably not sailing at this time. Yeah. But it was the same uh, a profile of, of, of people. Now I think they do kiting. Definitely. definitely. They don't do windsurfing. Windsurfing, it's not happening as, yeah, it's as not, much. Yeah, it's not as popular. Same. I mean, I get maybe, maybe three calls a year uh -huh. asking for windsurfing. Yeah, either I to rent it, mainly rentals. So two of those three calls are rentals, <laughs> and then one of those is for a lesson. For a lesson. Yeah. <laughs> and then we, if if that happens, then we just turn them into wing foilers. That's what I. That's what I do. I, yeah. I tell people, you know, random people that I know, and they want to learn windsurfing. I don't know why. Generally, <laughs> generally older people, and I tell you them, don't know why they want to learn windsurfing. I, I mean, to me, it's so dated. So yeah. you know, it, it's wing foiling. It's so much better. Yeah. In all aspects, yeah. I think it's definitely the way to go. I mean, you think it's easier as well? I think it's physically it's easier. Yes, I do think it's easier. Yeah. And and just doing it, it's easier on the, on your body also. Yeah. So yeah. Compared to windsurfing, you're pounding, and our conditions are you know semi choppy most of the time. So yeah. I don't see myself windsurfing ever again. Yeah, 15 to 22 knots. Like yeah. to be windsurfing, if it's 30. I mean, that's when the windsurfers want to go out, that's right? That's exactly right, yeah. And then, so our Most winds, of the time, it's wing foiling yeah. weather, yeah. Yeah, which is, I mean, which is great. For kiting, teaching kiting, wing foiling, I mean, 15 knots, it's good. Yeah, you know? I don't know. Kite foiling, which was what I first adapted into the foil, was kite foiling, and I loved it because you could just, I wanted to be on the water all the time. Mm -hmm. That's all I wanted to do. And then when I got on a foil and I could fly a kite in six to eight knots and I could go foiling mm. and be on the water, that was like, that was it. That was amazing. Well, the same thing, well, similar, happened to me and it was through Art Weibel. Have you ever met Art? <laughs> he's, he's come up on the podcast a couple of times. <laughs> he, was he was really an innovator, yeah. definitely. Definitely an innovator. He's a... Because he's always he was always ahead of time. I mean, I think the first time I saw anybody on a stand-up board mm -hmm. was Art. Yeah. First person I saw on a foil was Art also, and and, and actually he he was a good promoter also. So you, it's, a, it's a pity he doesn't live here anymore. Yeah. Now he lives in Maui. Yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, once you go there and that's your life, I you guess. might not come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, you know Mickey, he does the... Claro, sure. Yeah. I know him. So Mickey was here, and, and his He's, episode's already out, um, uh, so you okay. should definitely listen to that, and Art came up, and... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's gotten he's gotten some gear from us as well. And, and here here and there, his name comes up, so... Sí. No, no, he's, he's a super nice guy. Yeah. And, and besides that, he's a good promoter. You yeah. Know, he, he really enjoyed the whole thing. And he was a water person. He was always in the water doing something. Yeah. yeah. So you were born and raised in Puerto Rico? Yep, born and raised here. Yeah, and it, you've... Have you lived anywhere else? No. Like, well, actually, one year in, in 12th grade, I went to my aunt's house in, one year. <laughs> in New York, in Long Island. And I, and I tried to adapt there, but I... No, uh, no way. But I was able to sail. I, was, I got in touch with a guy that was a hobby sailor, and, and I used to race with him uh, on Hobby 16, so I was his crew. Okay. So it was a good experience, but uh, I, I came back. I came back. The, the whole idea was to stay there, but I couldn't... Well, so what was your first sport in the water? Like, well, well, no, first sport, surfing. Yeah. And maybe I was maybe nine or ten years old, and I used to go surfing. My brothers, my older brothers, are surfers. They, they were mm -hmm. surfers, and they're really good. At least one of them, Jorge Joyo. Well, Su let's, super let's talented. hope he doesn't hear this, and your other brother's like, hey, I'm good too. You know? <laughs> no, no, he was good. <laughs> Jorge was a, Joyo is 
I mean, he's old now, but <laughs> but he's a super talented guy. I mean, it's I see it sometimes in people wing foiling where you can see talent. Yeah, and he's talented. I'm not talented. I'm. Per, I have a lot of perseverance, yeah, uh, I, I mean, I, I, a dedication. That's what I do. That's so Which funny. my brother didn't have. No, he would do just pure talent. Pure talent, and he yeah. would, he can do anything. He he can do gymnastic. He was really good. Surfing, he was super good. Uh, I mean, anything. He would, but he will fade out really quickly. Yeah, and, and I would just stay a little bit longer. That's funny because I say the same thing. It's like they're like, oh, but you were really good. I'm like, no, I've done this for hundreds and hundreds of hours. <laughs> I was a, not great. And that <laughs> makes a big difference. Yeah. That makes a big yeah. difference. Um, so you. So I started surfing, and also in Isla Verde. That's where I was. I grew up in Isla Verde Beach. They used to have the Hobie Cats dealer. The Hobie Cat dealership was there, mm -hmm. and it was a very big thing actually. We talked about uh, people involved in sailing, and, and there was a big crowd there that would go sailing. And that's where I was growing, growing up. Maybe I was 12 when I started going out on boats uh, with Kike. You know Kike Figueroa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's still got the sailing school in yes, Carolina, he, right? That's right, that's right. And he was 10, 10 or 9. And his dad, or his stepdad, bought him a boat, Hobie 14, and I used to go with him. Uh, I was the crew, he was the, the helmsman, and between us, we didn't weigh 150 pounds, okay? Mm -hmm. So, and you had to have, to be able to race, you had to have 150 pounds. So we used, to, we used to have to carry 20 pounds. So between both of us, we were 130 pounds. Damn. But, so that's how we started. I mean, actually, he kept on it. In what, were, what were you were carrying that was 20 pounds? Oh, you say dumbbells. Uh, no way. <laughs> attached to the boat. Damn, that's crazy. There was a minimum weight that you had to have. But why is that? For, for it to capsize? Exactly. Or? So okay. be able to bring it back, which made no sense because the, the weight was in the middle. It wasn't really <laughs> helping us. <laughs> Pero, but it was, but it was interesting. And that's how I, we learn, and I learn, and Kike became a champion, world champion. Yeah. Uh, doing doing that uh, but i always wanted to do that and to to have a, my own hobby which the economics didn't work out in my household forget a, about a hobby uh, but so i had no choice well, I, I, I mean i i didn't have that much choice <laughs> i bought a windsurfer i didn't buy a windsurfer i bought a sail and i used to borrow i was just hanging on the beach uh, you know after school mm -hmm. i was always on the beach so I used to borrow windsurfers from people, and I would take their sails out, put my sail, and I go, <laughs> no I go sailing. <laughs> yeah, I was maybe. So you spent you spent a lot of time with your sail on the beach, just like waiting for somebody to lend me his, <laughs> their boards. <laughs> <laughs> but I, that's one of the reasons I met a lot of people, and yeah. I got involved in the in the the sailing. Now, I hindsight, so many people that I met that I still sailing. Yeah. They moved on to bigger boats and things like that. And I've never, I mean, I've raced in bigger boats with those people a yeah. lot of times. Yeah. That's cool. So I was, yeah, I mean, I think it was super special in the sense that I was on the beach and it, and it was the place to hang out. It's exactly what you have in your place here yeah. in Ocean Park. It used to be Isla Verde. It didn't used to be Ocean Park. Yeah. So all the young people, everybody would hang out in Isla Verde. Yeah. Isla Verde. And I was really young, but every, I knew everybody, and I was, I was a, like I told you, very persistent. So, so I would do a lot of sailing and windsurfing, windsurfing, windsurfing tricks. And, mm -hmm. and eventually, I went to the world uh, in, I mean, this is cutting it short. And I got third place in the world in freestyle in, in the Canary Islands, in the Canary Islands. What so, year was that? Uh, let me see. My guess would be like 81, maybe. 81? Yeah. So 79, 80, somewhere in there. That, that was a... For freestyle? I thought you were always a racer. No, freestyle. In racing, I, in that race, I got like seventh. Seventh okay. uh, in the lightweight division because they got different... Yeah. Uh, which, which actually was... It was great because you but weren't... In, in the freestyle, there's no, no weight division. It's everyone against everyone, Everybody right? against everybody. Yeah. And that was... A, I mean, that's... I didn't really... I mean, I enjoy sailing and, and 
practicing tricks and everything. The freestyle competition per se, I never, I really would have liked to be better at racing than the freestyle. But why did you opt for the freestyle? Because I was there. As, I was there in, in the Canary Islands, and they have the freestyle competition. So I said I'll sign oh, up. Okay. And I went, and I did well. And I, you know, I was I was good. Um, and then we went to other events uh, in Barbados. Actually, we had a big group from Puerto Rico that went to Barbados, and and we did we did well. We did well. So, I mean, I I don't think it's recognized. Uh, a lot of people, local people, don't recognize it but we had a culture of sailing yeah and it and it slowed down in the 90s and and now i think it's coming back i definitely see see it coming back yeah i think i think with this new influence i think wing foiling will help it a lot definitely, because if we definitely. can get younger people into it i mean i i saw we went to these events that you i mean yeah i don't, I mean, know, if, I don't know if you help organize but you're a huge advocate of like putting on races and, yeah. and getting in there with the sailing federation and doing wing foil events, right? To yep. get everybody together because it just what helps fuel all of that well, culture. Well, and I, and I definitely think that if it, I mean, it's not what I say, it's what other people say that are involved in the, in the sailing competitions international. It's going to be the future. Definitely yeah. it's going to be in the Olympics. Not, not on this one, but yeah. it's going to be. So we have to start now. And that, why? I mean, I just saw it. I was, and actually, I don't know if I told you about the event in St. Martin. Mm -hmm. I've gone two years. Uh, and and I've, you see 13-year-old kids that are super good. I mean, I, I, I couldn't believe it. Not only boys, but girls. I, a 13-year-old, a 14-year-old girl that uh, she beat me. And, <laughs> and, and I couldn't believe it because she... Uh, one of the races. No, no she, weight class, huh? No weight class. That's um, <laughs> that's true. And it was only re downwind ra racing. It okay. was no upwind. So start is super important. Yeah. And speed. Yeah. And speed. But uh, there was no tactics, uh, and uh, that makes a makes a big difference yeah. for for me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, I I didn't grow up or or do any sailing. It was just kiteboarding was my first wind sport, and then. Mm. I did some kite foil races here and there, but it was very confusing, like where to round the buoy. I had to really, you know, especially with you guys, when mm -hmm. we were doing these races, I really have to focus about like what the course is doing. I have to map it out in my head and, same, and same, figure same. out like there's, there's a, so much technique, there like, is a, where you stop, when you tack, where you want to, what your angle is going to be. And, and yeah. it's, it's super cool that like one little thing or one little mistake or one turn that's too short could make a huge difference in you winning or not. I agree. Right. I agree. Like uh, first first day of the, that competition that I went last year, it was all downwind, and and it was pretty obvious. I mean, I was getting fourth and fifth. Uh, there were maybe like 27 people competing all together. Of those 27, I think it was nine or 10 were on the pro class, okay, and the pro class. Since I had been in that competition before, I had no choice. I had to be in the pro class because I've gotten third the year before. But uh, like they were all the little kids, and, I, and I'm not exaggerating. They're all little kids. You see them jumping, playing on the beach, uh, like 12, 13 year old kid, and all of them except one guy that was from Antigua. He was like 21, and then myself. The other <laughs> ones were all the kids, and they were super good, yeah. super good. But the first day, we, they, I asked uh, the Grace Committee to put some upwind to make it a little bit more interesting. <laughs> so that's when things change. have a little bit of an advantage there. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when things change a little bit. Yeah. I was able to be more competitive against yeah. this kid. But all these kids are from Guadalupe, actually. Most of them, all, not all of them. And they, I just saw they, they were at, the, at Italy, in a, in a regatta in Sardinia. Yeah. They're all over. They're, they're really grooming them to be world champions, and yeah. they are going to be. I mean, I have no, no doubt that they're going to be, because it's like I saw, <laughs> I saw a Robbie Nash in one competition. He was already famous, and Robbie Nash was already famous. And actually, it's the other way around. It's, he was there, and Bjorn Dunkerbeg, which is a famous, I don't know how many times he's won the world championships yeah. in windsurf. He was uh, maybe like a nine-year-old, nine or 10-year-old kid 
And people were saying, mira, Robbie, here's your, your, the next champion because he was so good. <laughs> and and he, he was. He, yeah. Dunkerbeck was incredible. Yeah. I mean, I don't know any windsurfers, but yeah. I know those two names. Yeah, so. sure, because he, he's a legend. <laughs> yeah. And now his son is a wing foiler. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, they're all going to be wing foilers. Eventually. Yeah. 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 So. Um, were you teaching back then? You know, when you fir- before you had your, your hotel school, you were teaching to, to fund your dreams or... No. Or what were you doing? Actually, yeah, I was uh, going to school, mm-hmm. but I was teaching, and I got an offer made uh, to, to, to sell some boards, uh, windsurfer boards. We're talking the standard big, now they're classics, they call them. But they, yeah. and, and, and I actually, uh, I was interested. I, I was teaching at another place uh, just by, by the hour, and I told the, the, my boss, was super, I mean, it was my idol. This guy was a super a good sailor. He had all the beautiful girls. You know, it's exactly what I wanted to be, <laughs> what I wanted to be. I was maybe 14 or, no, maybe 16. Yeah. I wanted to be him. Anyway, so, so I asked him, you know, they're giving me, making me an offer to sell boards. I'd rather do it with you because he, he had a different brand. Uh, but he said, no, no, keep going, you know, go ahead, do whatever you have to do. I can't pay you more or whatever. So I started selling boards. Long story short, I, I became partners with, with this person that was bringing boards, and we had a really successful business. Eventually, he sold me his part yeah. of the business. He, he had other interests. Uh, so, and that's how I, I stayed in, the, in, in this course of sailing, and selling which wasn't my favorite thing to do. Oh, really? you know, I'm really bad at selling. I, I, That's what I, I was. I was interested. I'm like, huh? Kiko's in sales, huh? No, like, I don't really. see it. I mean, when it's your passion, it's different, right? right? Because right. if you believe in these boards, then it's I, I, then it's easy. You know, I agree. You, you can't just sell anything, right? I'm the same, but I love sales um, in general. I just grew up in sales, but I always sell like the product that I'm like kiteboarding. Like I grew up, I was. 6, 15, 16 when I learned how to kite and mm. started running a school and, and being an instructor. I just, I had so much passion for it. There was no way I couldn't sell anybody on it. Same. Like kiteboarding was the coolest thing in the world. And whatever I was doing was the coolest thing in the world and they had to do it. So it was just like, you know, you had your own boards and you had your brands and that's... Right, and, and, I, and when, it actually, when it changed, we were selling one design boards. So everybody was on the same equipment and and... At one time, we had a fleet of 80 people. You know, we had regattas where we had 80, 80 participants. Local. Local participants, yeah. That's crazy. And, they, and while it was one design, it, it was fine. It was easy to sell. You know, there's no choice. Yeah. The moment it got a little bit more complicated, I was a little bit against the whole thing of money. I mean, if you had the money, and I, I'm guilty yeah. of, of trying to have the best equipment. Yeah. And it costs money, unfortunately. But the, but the one design really advanced the people that had the talent, not necessarily the, the best equipment. Yeah. So from there on, it just it wasn't me uh, trying to push equipment. It just wasn't me. Yeah. And eventually, I, I sold the business. I sold the business and moved into other, other things. You, you guys had a big retail shop? You had a showroom, yeah. everything? And yeah. You were in, selling everything. In Condado. In okay. Condado. So we had the same, same thing you have here, yeah. pretty much, but with the windsurfing. Yeah. Windsurfing, we had kayaks also, uh, some surfboards. We never wanted to compete with the surfboard, surf uh, shops because yeah. we had windsurfing and nobody was selling windsurfing. We yeah. were the only ones. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it was a little niche that we built that it was, it was good for a, for a whole bunch of years until I burned out. I yeah. really couldn't deal with it anymore. Yeah, I mean. And sold it. Well, there's one thing, you know. Like being so passionate about something and then getting into business with it and it can burn either one or the other, yeah. you know, it can burn your passion, you know, for both things, you know, Same. for either you drive the business until you run out of passion or other way around, you know, yeah. which is, it's a tough balance. So it's, and, I, and I was lucky, honestly, that I had my wife would really was supportive all the time and mm-hmm. she was part of it. And we had eventually we, we built up some good employees. So I didn't have to be there all the yeah. time and, and things were rolling. Yeah, that's key. So that's key, definitely. Yeah. So, so that helped. But the moment I didn't have them, 
that's when I said, Man, I'm, I'm out of here. I, yeah. I need to sell. And because I wasn't, I didn't want to spend the time on the, on the shop. Yeah. I want to be sailing. Yeah. And that's what I eventually, that's what I did. I, I switched into, for a time being, I, I was sailing other boats, big boats. I, I, I got into racing because I enjoyed it. But it's uh, definitely harder to afford compared to, to wing foiling or any, any of these sports that are so much cheaper. Yeah. yeah. You were, so you were in the windsurfing. I wasn't, I was there, like, I started kiting before. And I, in, the, in Playa del Carmen, in the area I learned, we didn't have any windsurfing. It wasn't a big thing. Mm. But I know that what happened was that the, all the gear started to get more techy, more yes. expensive. And then the, the entry was just, it was too hard to get in. And everyone was pushing all this gear that was just, like exactly. People just couldn't get into it anymore. It just wasn't affordable, and it just wasn't. It wasn't even made for learning. I yeah. Mean, for so, for maybe in Europe the the market was so big. Yeah. But here uh, we needed to have the school. We need to have influence uh, people coming in. Yeah. And once the boards got so fancy, they weren't really meant for the average person. And then we stopped doing the one design racing because it, they. It changed in the states also. They changed the board, so it took a while until until we people had to change their equipment again. So that all slowed down. Yeah. In combination with the burnout that I that I was a little bit burnout. Yeah. And that's when I decided to get out and got out. And eventually, once I was out, I was doing some other things. I was enjoying more the sailing aspect, and and eventually. Vela Uno had a, brought three a kite, the Whippica kites, mm -hmm. the first ones. And I bought, well, actually, I don't buy anything. I'm, I'm cheap. <laughs> My wife bought me a, a Whippica kite and a board. And I had seen, and I don't remember his name, but the, this guy's from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. a, a, they have real, real kite. Mm -hmm. There's Matt Nuzo. Matt, I know Matt because he used to live here. Yeah. He used to teach here in Puerto Rico, but his partner. It was the first guy I remember being in, in, in my house, just watching the ocean, and then I see this one guy with a kite, which was very unusual, jumping. He was giving this huge jump. I already had my, my gear, but I, I wasn't able to. I tried uh, to learn by, on my own, and there was nobody here. And I was getting dragged, and, and I was having so many complications. And so he was really nice, and he explained me a little bit of what I was doing. Kip, Kip or Skip, or I remember his name. Anyways, he, he really gave me the direction to be able to learn to, to kite, and that's how it's, I started. Well, that's cool. Uh, uh, and the one thing, I remember him being so way ahead. I mean, he was jumping, and it was just at the beginning, at the beginning. So eventually, I kept on sailing, uh, wing, uh, kiting, and I met Royce Reed. Have you, have you ever heard, heard of Royce? No. I or, mean, Royce, it's a, quite a character, super nice guy. He's from New Zealand. Okay. And he was, I remember because he was a, a, another, I mean, I'm, I'm at my house watching people sailing, and I see this one guy that was extremely good on the waves, windsurfing. And, and I just had to meet him. I, see, I have to see who, who he was. And, he, and I remember meeting him. I waited till he came in, and I introduced myself, and I talked, you know, where are you? He used to live in Maui. That's why he was so good. <laughs> and, uh, and we talked. We became friends, and he ended up living in one of our apartments right there. So he became, you know, he's a super friend, still is. But he, the thing is, he moved. He lives in Washington now. But super cool guy, lived with us. And, you know, he grew up with our daughters, a super selling. And we st he started, you know, he pushed me into getting into the retail business again. So we started, oh, no. we got a, a line <laughs> that was RRD. Yeah. And we started selling RRDs and, and we sold a ton of, of kites. I mean, I remember the first year we sold like 110 somewhere in there, kites. The first year we, we started. Nice. Doing the exactly same principle. We teach and we sold, you know, we, we teach them. A lot of times we, I told them, give you free lessons. I'll teach you if you buy the equipment, you know, buy the equipment from us. 
And that created a whole bowl of people getting into it. And we stayed, you know, we sold it. Eventually, I got out of it. I, again, I'm not really into selling as much. And Royce, Royce sold the, the business to Phil. Okay. Phil in Goodwins. Yeah. They changed the name. It was yeah. Kitesurf. Kitesurf Puerto Rico. That was yeah. the name of it. Yeah, yeah. I, I've, had, I've had some, a, a vendor when I first got here, he sent my stuff to them because mine was Kite Puerto Rico and theirs was Kite Surf PR or something. something and they got our like accounts that. mixed up and that's when I realized that their name had changed. That changed. <laughs> they changed it to Goodwins. But they, they bought that business from, from Royce. And Royce had sold, I had sold my, business, my part to, to Royce. Pero, but it was super interesting because, again... So were you the first kite school here on the island, or...? No, no. I think the first official sky, kite school was a Jaime Torres, Jimito, in Vela Uno. Okay, yeah. I think they, they had them. I used to teach friends and people that I know. I teach them yeah. on my time, and most of the time... Actually, now I remember why I got into the business. I was teaching somebody... <laughs> I shouldn't say this, but they, <laughs> this, uh, a friend and somebody, I don't want to mention his name, but he came over and told me, why, I, why was I teaching people kiting? Uh, you know, why should, I asked him, why should I, uh, shouldn't I? No, no, because you're not, you know, you're not certified or whatever. And I said, well, no, okay, I'm not certified, but I do whatever I want. I mean, if, these are people that I knew and friends. So from there on, I started selling. <laughs> I said, Royce, let's do it. Let's, let's sell some. And we, we sold a whole bunch of them because of service. That's all it was. Yeah, yeah. We were giving the service. Yeah. And also, I think people knew me for, for the sailing. So they came over, and it was a transition from the windsurfing to, to the kite. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. That's a good story. I didn't know that about, the, about the kiting side. I knew that you did the windsurfing and had the house and, and all of that. Um, and the house, like you say, it, it was really meant to... Actually, I had just gotten married a couple of years from before I bought the house. And a, my, we were looking for beachfront. Beachfront wasn't as unaccessible as it is today yeah. at that time. This is 84, 84, 85. And, it, and we were looking and we saw some houses in Ocean Park precisely. But then eventually, my wife was looking, and she found this, the one we, we have right now, which is a killer setup. I it's, thought. A, it's amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. a really super nice setup. And I say, great, you know, super nice. Well, we can't afford it. I mean, it, there's no way we can afford it. No, no, no. My mother-in-law came over, and she upfronted some of the money. Nice. And that's the reason we, we have that house, because yeah. even at that time, it was more than we could afford. Yeah. yeah. So I... Always thank her. Because yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have bought a house or an apartment or be doing anything if my wife didn't push me. No, no, no. <laughs> I'd still be a, <laughs> opening coconuts on the beach in Mexico, <laughs> teaching kiteboarding. No, that's not true. But <laughs> um, it's it's good to have a little bit of push and and yeah, you got to take a risk, right? Okay. For me, I wasn't into risk. I was more about like work hard and and get what I worked for, kind right, of thing, good. right? <laughs> Well, in our case, it really it seemed to me that there was a good timing. The timing was perfect. You know, it, there was a lot of people interested, and, and it did work. Uh, eventually, eventually, I, I changed it. Uh, we had a hurricane, and one of the hurricanes destroyed our, our fence. Mm -hmm. So we took the time to change it, not into, because it, it was a good business. You know, there was money to be made with the guest house. Definitely a good business, but I wanted to live there also. And we're, we had two girls growing up. So, so we, you know, we figured we, either we moved or we keep it as a business. Yeah. So we decided to do a half point. We made the apartments, four apartments, and kept the house also. So, so it paid itself. That's what I wanted it from the beginning. Yeah. So that worked, worked really and good. And you always lived there? Even when it was being a guest house, you lived there or no? Or, uh, it was, or it was strictly a business? Well, maybe for the first year, uh, no, I didn't live there. I, I lived somewhere else. But uh, we had a, always had a resident a windsurfer in that case, which was actually a super good waterman, uh, Dicky Villanueva. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, he, he was our first uh, resident instructor. He lived on the house, and he took care of the, the business. That's cool. See? And, uh, and then we had Romby Acevedo, another super cool guy. He also did it. He stayed with us. But uh, you know what? But before that, one time I decided I was out of, I mean, we had a good offer to someone wanted to do what I was doing. And he, he rented for six months the patio of my house. And he was doing the, the same thing I was doing. Mm -hmm. So I would just collect and I, and I could go sailing. I didn't have to worry. So it worked out good uh, until the hurricane came, destroyed the house. And then we decided, let's do the apartments. Yeah. And with the apartments, it, it, it worked out fine because we met Royce. And yeah. not only Royce, it's always been, so we've always had people, interesting people. When I say interesting water people, it's what I like to have there. Yeah. Ren is the best example. Yeah. I mean, Ren is super cool. And, and we have her there. I enjoy having her there. Yeah. Over there. So so we saved that apartment for rent. Good good healthy for competition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well yeah. they're just I mean uh, like Dicky or like Romby uh, and there's more people I I can't remember right now, but uh, or Royce. They just love the water. They just yeah. love being out there sailing. Ren is the same thing. So that's cool. I I enjoy it. I identify with that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's good to have like this little bit of community living and yeah. you know with surround yourself with people that are like-minded and it, it's it, yeah keeps you younger yeah. you, you know keeps you motivated because you see them going on the water you're like oh i should go on the water <laughs> you know like they're doing something then you know it, it keeps it really close to home and uh, True. we have something very similar like where we live it's uh -huh. it's kind of like a compound and the instructors live there and then we live there and we have people that come and go that are guests but uh -huh. they're all like doing water sports with us. We don't rent it out as like part of the hotel. Mm. Um, so it's cool that we're all there and we have barbecues and you know, it's, it's just, it's cool to have that kind of energy, you know? And also, and also in our case, since they became, they were friends. I mean, they were friends from the beginning or some of them I met and we have this uh, common interest in the water, yeah. like, like with Royce and, and Ren. They also help take care of the place, meaning I was always, when I first moved in there, that wasn't the best area to be there. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot of crime, and I honestly, a couple of times I, I thought I regret buying it. Because oh. it was really bad, really bad. That was huh. in, the, in the 80s at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, pero, so I was always concerned of, you know, leaving doors open or whatever. Or, or we had a boat, a sailboat, so we go for two weeks. And we, since since we had people that we that we liked and they took care of, of our place, yeah, yeah. So that worked out perfect. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. When did you um, first get into foiling? Because it was mm -hmm. it was kite foiling, was the first thing you did, or did you do windsurf foiling first? No, no, I did actually. No, I did kite kite foiling, and it was through Art Art Weibel. He brought the Carafino brand, and they were. I mean, they were, there was nothing else. Uh, <laughs> they were, you can say what you can say about it, something that does, that nothing were, else exists. You well, know? eventually we figure out, they, and Art was such a nice guy. Uh, like, for example, uh, I would buy, I, I bought one from him. He, he actually taught me more or less what, how, how to do it. We went sailing on our sailboat, and Art came with, with us. So, so I, I was able to, to learn through him. But the boards, they would break. And you use them, you buy them, and use them two times, they, and they would break. They were a, a piece of crap. If, I'm sorry for Carafino <laughs> to say. I mean, he was really the introduction to the yeah. kite foiling. But, but the foil wasn't breaking. It was just the board? The boards. The boards and how breaking. was it mounted to the board? It was a tuttle box? No, there were four screws that's, that, that would go. I mean, it had a, like the base of the mass had a... Like it, like it is now, like a base plate, yeah, and it had yeah. four screws. Four screws, but they, it the wasn't a track. It wasn't a track. Yeah, it was just four holes, and it went through it, and it was bolted exactly. on the other side. Yeah, okay. And they would break. No, no reinforcement. <laughs> they would break so easily, and Art was nice enough that he funded the whole thing because, it, you know, he was he's a super nice guy. Money wasn't his priority, so he just wanted to make sure that you know people were happy. And he changed a couple of boards. I remember at least two boards that he just changed them. And I think eventually it would be interesting to ask him if he got some credit or something. I doubt it. Because mm -hmm. 
I think the warranties weren't a thing back the, in the day. No, not with not, <laughs> not with, with that, that brand. No, it wasn't. Eventually, it went downhill. It's a pity because it, he was innovative. That the brand, they were the first ones. Yeah. yeah. Did you when you were on Carafino? Did you ride Lift? That was quickly. No, eventually, after? yeah. After after that, I Carafino was again at first. I, I, he was here in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Actually, he met with uh, Mike Leeson and, mm. and Nick. Yeah. It, 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 they, I mean, originally they wanted to do something together, but it, it didn't branch out. And probably the best thing that happened. That, that, well, that it two people that are very creative get together, they might, might not, not mix. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I, I know it wasn't a good situation at what it came out. Uh, I mean, eventually. But, but Nick did very well. I mean, he, he did what he had to do. Yeah. And, and he, he did well. But yes, uh, I had, I, but even before Carafino, Mike Leeson actually had a um, a sky ski. It was an oh, aluminum. Oh, like the air chair. Air, ch air chair, and actually he had given it to. He told I was with Art. We went to Isabela, and he had it somewhere there. We looked at it, and he said, "Just take it, take it." The the aluminum foil, uh, you know, the board, and Art took the the the. the actually, it wasn't. It was uh, some kind of a adapter for a chair i guess i don't i don't really remember but uh, so he brought it down and we were using that aluminum which was so much better <laughs> than the carafino yeah i That's even wild. went to the first worlds they had for kite foil they had it in france <coughs> and that's what i was using everybody was using actually everybody was using local brands from over there they Nick went with Lyft. He just started uh, Lyft. We, uh, Willie and myself, we went with uh, aluminum foils. The, these sky ski, the, the guys from California couldn't believe that we were using them for, for kiting. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> uh, and we didn't do bad, but the guys with the, the guys with the, actually with the carbon fiber, the good guys had carbon fibers. And they, yeah. they but oh, Phil, from Goodwins, he got sixth place. You see, he did really well. And this was a kite foil race? Kite foil worlds, the first ones. Huh. They had a La Ciotat. So Phil got sixth, Willie got eighth, I got 11th. I say 10th because there was a girl that beat me. <laughs> <laughs> but I say 10th, but, she, but I was 11th. She was, <laughs> but, uh, but it was an interesting, and you had a group of maybe Know, they were maybe four or five more people from Puerto Rico that went there. So. Do you know what year that was? I don't remember what year, but maybe, I don't, I don't know. I would have to find 2009, out. 2009, 2010, something like that, probably. I'm really bad with, with Yeah, the, yeah. I uh, mean, there's, there's a lot of different, different time stamps in your head, I can, <laughs> I can imagine. Well, I, I still have a shirt from that regatta. <laughs> I'll find out. We're I'll look it up. check it out and see. <laughs> I'll, look, I'll look it up. La Ciotad. La Ciotad. La Ciotad. Yeah, I'll it was, look it up and it was, uh, and see. Nick was there, and uh, do you know? Uh, ah, there's there was a few pe few people from here. It was uh, actually the kite foiling thing was picked up for a, for a moment. We had a, a fairly good group of people that were doing kite foiling and racing. I, I yeah. always push the racing. So. Yeah. So it was well, racing. it's because that's the only like that's a good way to gauge skill. See, you know, so if you get across the line first, you're first. You know, there's no subject to that. True. <laughs> Freestyle is different, right? You could yeah. like my backflip, your backflip, what was higher, I thought <laughs> I was higher. You know, there's no way to gauge these things. It's, it's pretty That's subjective. Yeah. Racing is very clear. You get past the start line, you get past the finish, you're the winner. See. So, but, I, but I think you got a good taste of racing in the, the last North Americans here. You were doing better and better every, yeah, every day. Yeah, it was, it was super fun. And I, and I could tell you were enjoying the, the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was talking to Ren about it. Like, I, I did some kite foil races, like with my inflatables back in the day in Cabarete and mm -hmm. here and there just for fun. And, and I thought I started kite foiling early. It was like 2012 mm -hmm. when I started kite foiling. It was with a lift setup actually in Cabarete. Um, and yeah. With the, the lift foil? Yeah, lift. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the first like three boards I had were lift. Mm -hmm. Um, somewhat, I guess Nick went down to Cabarete and he left them with somebody over there mm -hmm. and um, Laurel Eastman bought one or it was left at her shop or something like that. Anyway, and yeah, the, I've done a couple like, 
you know, local races with right. you guys and, you know, little regattas. And that was the first bigger one that I'd ever been to mm. um, with the wing foil. And yeah, it's super fun. And you did a good one in, in Florida recently, right? And you, you got first? Um, so that's a, no, no. <laughs> oh, well, I saw you on the podium. Oh, you know what? That was, um, yeah, it's, it was like a long distance uh, leg. Uh, I get envy. I mean, I, I get yeah. a... Envy because I, I like the idea of going places and racing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was um, it was from hosted by Other Side Board Sports yeah, in the okay. Keys, and it's called um, damn I can't remember the name of the event. I think it's the Wind Games, mm -hmm. and they do one like a race. You do it on a twin tip. People do it on twin tip, wing foil, and then kite foils, and they're all categorized differently. And I did it on the on the wing, uh -huh. and I was just my strategy. It was to the lighthouse and back. I don't know. I think it was 10, 11 miles in total mm -hmm. between it. And I just didn't fall. I just stayed <laughs> up, went as fast as I could, but I just made sure I didn't fall. And I went around. And I, you have no idea if you win or not because it's, they just start you and you go whenever you want. And ah, they hit okay. a timer. They're like, oh, number so, 24 started at 10.04. And so then what? you come back. And, and so you're not, you don't know if you're doing well or right, not. Right, like okay. you see other people out there and you're like, am I going faster? Well, that's actually am I not. That's <laughs> you know? actually. So it's harder. Yeah, harder because you're trying to push your push all the time. You yeah. don't you don't know you don't want to stop. Yeah. So I started first and then I rounded the lighthouse. I was I was looking around, it was really choppy out there and and uh, I was looking around, I didn't see any other wing foilers coming by. I saw one guy and eventually and I was like, I don't know how I'm doing, <laughs> but I feel like I'm going fast and <laughs> Uh, so at the end, they they announced it, and I wasn't I wasn't totally shocked. <laughs> okay. I don't know how many there was, but it was just for fun. Yeah, it was a really okay. cool event. So, yeah. yeah, the wing the wing foil races is just super fun because you're just hanging out. It's kind of low stress. You're not having to fly your kite around, and mm -hmm. you know the you're all sitting in the water chatting, and then you're looking at your watch, <laughs> which is really easy to do because you're just floating there on your board, and then you get up and. You're like, okay, five minutes, and you see a flag, and then it's no, you just get up. As long as you can get up on foil, then you're that's fine, good. Yeah, <laughs> right? And then you can cruise around. And yeah, I had, a, I had a lot of fun racing against those guys and uh, you guys, and everybody has so much experience, so it's cool to see the tactics and, and try to puzzle it together. It's, it's fun because it's, gotta, not, it's, not all of, it's not all about speed, right? I had a big we, foil. We have to do more here. Yeah, we have to do more here because yeah. you, you have the perfect s setup there. Yeah, you know, the beach is wide. We can stay in one side to the windward of, uh, so we don't bother anybody. Yeah, I've got some buoys and stuff. I got I, buoys. I got yeah. buoys and boats. And yeah, so. yeah, we should definitely set up a little bit more racing because it's for, just super fun for everybody, and anybody can do it. Sure. You know, like it doesn't matter what place or if you're faster or not, as long as you start and then you finish. Same. That's it, and everyone had fun. Like, I mean, as long as you're not too competitive, but if you're too competitive, yeah. then you'll get better. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, no, but I, but I agree with you. you. You can get, if you start dealing with the rules, too many rules, and people get, uh, they, they get away from that. Yeah, they yeah. Don't, they don't want to be so. But yeah. no, I, have, I don't see that in, in here. No. Although no, I had so. a little incident with uh, Joey, Joey, shit, the guy from San Francisco. Uh, I, I know who you're talking about, yeah. Uh, in, in, with rules. Yeah which was not the nicest thing, but actually eventually we were able to talk it out and, yeah. but, uh, but it, it, it goes into a, di a different zone uh, with, the, with the rules. You have to know the rules, you have to go protest. It becomes a little bit more personal. Yeah. I don't know if it's that good. Yeah, I'm not, I've, I've never done that because I've never been in, in racing like in that kind of cat like category, but I know there was like all these rules. I'm like, well, as long as I, you know, round the buoy. I'm not too close to somebody. I don't run them over. I know the right of way. So and I start when I start, you know, yeah. I, I wind shadowed somebody one time and he was, he was super upset because he was on an 800 mic slab and I was on my 1250 North. Uh, okay. It was pretty light. And I was just pumping my way upwind on <laughs> one of the last buoys to get around. And he was trying to, but I was ahead of him. So I wind shadowed him and he couldn't get upwind fast enough. So he hit the buoy and I went around Shit. it and he, <laughs> Every time I see him, I hear it. I'm like, I'm like I don't know. That, that, I don't that think that was a part of the rules. Who was that? I mean, um, he was. He was also riding a north north sails. From he, from he, the east coast, probably somebody from the east coast. Yeah, he, a couple he, of guys. he makes his own made his own boards. I I know his name, but it's not nah, coming to me. Worry. I'm not very good at this. Don't worry, me neither. <laughs> but yeah, that was uh, when you when you started kiting, like with the Whippica stuff. How long did it take for it to 
take over windsurfing or did it? Like, when did you stop windsurfing altogether? I, uh, I think I stopped before I went into the kite surfing. I, I was, uh, I, was, well, actually, I, you know, I had an injury on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. And that's when I stopped windsurfing. I had to, had it operated. And I actually, I, I had a sailboat. I did racing with this, my own okay. sailboat with my, my, my friend and, and partner. We bought a, a racing boat and we raced. Cool. Uh, so, so I was a gap. It okay. was, so I wasn't, win, I didn't stop windsurfing uh, to going to kiting. Oh, okay, it wasn't, I it wasn't like a transitional phase. It was just no, like. No, it was, I stopped windsurfing and I went to sailing in, in, in bigger boats. And then I went into kiting when I, I mean, I, I lost the boat on the hurricanes. I've lost three boats on the hurricanes. Damn. And, they, and in that gap, I needed to find something to do in front of my house. So kite, kite surfing. Kiting it was. Yeah. Um, and then kite foiling and then wing foiling. Actually, and wind foil. I tried before wing foiling. I mm -hmm. tried wind surfing with a foil. And I got all the equipment. I started, but it started... I mean, I'm older now. This is maybe six years ago, six, maybe six, seven years ago. And my back started hurting. Yeah. So I sent off again and I bought wing, wing foiling. Yeah. Which has been perfect. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Because, um, yeah, the first time I believe that I really met you guys was you were with, you were with Niels and uh, Willie. Uh-huh. And you guys were just always with your foil kites, your, yeah. and you guys were racing. Same. So right after that, like a week later, I bought a race foil. I bought an R1 Ozone. Uh, I was okay. like, I'm doing that the too. The black one. The yeah. Black one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, I couldn't keep up with you guys on my lift, on my lift setup or whatever I had. I still had the same lift setup I brought from but you, Mexico. But you had a small sail, I remember, right? I had a 10 meter. No, oh, okay. And I was using like 15 meter lines. Uh, okay. So I have <laughs> I you. I still have it. In my phone, dealing with black sail. Because <laughs> I remember, <laughs> I think I met you. I saw you in the water. Yeah, I yeah. Saw, so That's me. exactly how I name everybody in my phone, the same. <laughs> black yeah. sail. Um, yeah, so I, I saw you guys racing around, and I was into foiling. There's not a lot of kite foilers around. You no, know? no. Like, it just wasn't a thing. I mean, I know I came here, I guess it's been six years. I've been in Puerto Rico now, and, mm -hmm. and it, what it sounds like is that it's gone through like phases, you know, and transitions that it was like, I saw, I see photos of Ocean Park back in the day and there was like six, seven hobby cats parked on the beach, you know, which is super cool. I don't in, see where, in, where in Isla Verde? No. In Isla Verde, there were some here in Ocean Park yeah, from like it, back in the day. Yeah, back in know? the day in the 70s, Yeah, you'd see 20, 20, yeah. 25 in the, in the hobby cats. That's yeah. when, I, when I really started the whole thing of sailing. It was through hobby cats, and yeah. that's my passion was the, the hobby cats. Uh, and like I told you, but I couldn't afford it. So Kike Figueroa, mm -hmm. who eventually became world champion, I don't know how many times he's been world champion. He's, it's really still incredible. Still sailing. He's still sailing, he, yeah. and he's really good. I remember when I went back, uh, eventually I was able to afford a hobby cat, and I bought a hobby cat. And I wanted to beat Kike. I always said, no, you know, this guy, okay, you, you were on the Hobie Cats. I know I could be better. I always think I'm myself as better. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, uh, anyways, uh, so I, I bought a Hobie Cat and I started practicing. And I remember going racing to beat Kike because that's my goal. Actually, there was no way. I mean, it's, <laughs> this guy was so much better. It was, I sold the Hobie Cat eventually. <laughs> I couldn't even get close, so my hat's off to Kike always because he's really good. Well, it had to be the gear, right? He had a better boat? No, no, no. <laughs> no, I had a brand new boat. No, he's just, he just stayed in one thing, and he was yeah. good at it. Yeah. So. yeah, that's cool. Like, if you can stay in one discipline and, and just... Yeah, because he and, did. And he focus for, and do that and still do it. Like, I see, you know, he's, like, bringing up the next generation, right? Yeah, yeah. now he's doing more teaching and yeah. things like that. But until recently, he was still competing. He, I think he's been like to four Olympics, something like that. And, and like, uh, he's competitive. It's not like a, I mean, anybody could go to Olympics, uh, or it used to be, like anybody could go to Olympics. But to be competitive, it's a different story. Yeah. Because you, know? uh, you went to the Olympics for, and what was it for? Windsurfing. Windsurfing in 84. Racing. When they first had it, yeah. They first had windsurfing in, the, in Los Angeles. 
Los Angeles. And my claim to fame, I, I got third in one of, one of the races. That was, That's good. Everything else was... I there was, was three racers in that event? Or? <laughs> that one, I think there was like, I don't remember, but I think it was 30-something, 30 32, yeah. 32. So, no, I was pretty proud. That's cool. But, uh, but my position there was like, I was in the, between 10 and 15. That was my, that's where I should have been. They, I had an incident and I got disqualified. Unfairly, I, I think. Damn rules. <laughs> Damn rules. And uh, actually, my witness was not my witness. My witness was against me. Oh, no. And, and I found out through the judges afterwards, they, they told me, Mira, this guy didn't, didn't help you at all. Oh, damn. And sure enough, he gained positions yeah, of in course. me. I ended up 20th in the, in the event. Still good. Still really cool. Yeah, no, no. It was a good experience. Excellent yeah. experience. That's fun. Um, yeah, because these phases that you see, like, you know, hobby cats were up and then you seem to sold a ton of windsurfing gear yep, and yep. then a ton of kites in the day. And right. I mean, we, we sell lots of gear, you know, we yeah. sell, we sold lots of kites at one point. We sold lots of wind, uh, wing foiling stuff and we still sell lots of foiling gear, but I think there's like, there's a, like a little bit of a dip in the trend of the water sports and yes. And, and I, I actually, I know you have your school, but yeah. again, I think I mentioned it before. The key to me, for me, it's having the school, promoting the school, because yeah, yeah. that's where you get your clients. Yeah. That's how you, people buy equipment and you get them involved. And the racing, I see it, I mean, I enjoy the racing, but the racing, it's like a weekend thing. You know, people get together. And it's not really so much the competitive aspect of it, but it's just the, the joining and the, the parties, which I've never been to parties or anything like that, but. But I know part of the whole thing of our races, but that there was a trophy presentation. We used to do it at the chart house. Mm -hmm. There used to be a chart house here in Condado. And the, basically the inscription was to pay for the dinner. Yeah. And, and we had a nice dinner and we had the trophy presentations. And it was killer. And people love to be involved in that. And that's how it became big. And people wanted to go to the, to the events. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so wing, when wing foiling came around, which is a really important, uh, you know, pivot point in the foiling because mm. it makes it a whole lot more accessible for a lot of people. Sure. Kite foiling, you've got to be a really good kiter, mm -hmm. right? Windsurfing to foil, you've got to be a really good windsurfer. And the equipment is big <laughs> yeah. and it's heavy and it's yeah. not... I'm yeah. So um, the first time that... Um, I heard about wing foiling was from you, mm -hmm. from Niels, and you, and Niels was like, "Man, forget about kiting, like ditch it." <laughs> well, that's Stop difficult. It. That's difficult. <laughs> it's like, that's difficult. Niels, this is he's it. absolute. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "That's it. This is the future. Nobody's gonna kite anymore. Say. That's that's done with. You know, focus I, on this." Actually, and let's go. A, a good story. <laughs> I I met Niels at the there was some nationals, say kite surfing nationals they had here. When they had a, if, I mean, it was, it was anything. Yeah, I think it was anything goes. But they were using those formula boards. You know, they were four fins, uh, very hard yes. to. Did you ever do that? No, I never no. did. I never did. But oh, they had the, the, the nationals here in Puerto Rico. And there were a lot of good guys that came over. Among them, uh, uh, Henneken was here. Yeah, and, so uh, Johnny Henneken said that he got into foiling because of you. Well, uh, actually... Or he, he, he foiled for the first time with you or something see, like see, that. See, 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 he, see. He, I don't know. I, I keep uh, telling him whenever I speak to him, uh, seldomly, but uh, that I, I'm proud to, that, that he says it because yeah. I thought it was, it was true. Yeah, he, he, we, they allowed us, the kite foilers, to race. They, we were, kite foiling was in Pampers. I mean, it was, it was yeah. starting, yeah. and we were doing it here. So they allow us to race in the nationals with these people, with the, all the good guys. And it was Art, uh, Willie, and myself. And that's where I met uh, Niels for the first time. I remember, uh, he, you know, we got introduced through Nick. And he said, uh, I told him I was doing kite for, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> that's how I met Niels. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, OK, yes. So we were doing upwind. We were doing super good. I was yeah. top three all the time. Most of the time to the windward mark, I was top three. 
downwind, they would pass me. I couldn't, I didn't have the control or anything. Nowadays, it wouldn't be like that, pero, pero at that time, they were, they were faster off the wind. But there was a whole bunch of good guys, and some of them were interested. Eh? Not only Johnny, Johnny asked me, I'm going to stay a couple of days, so would you teach me how to do the, the kite falling? And I, I was, I didn't do anything. I just loaned him the kite, and I had the dinghy waiting to pick him up because and I you figured, never picked him up. and I never picked him up. He went to Ocean Park. He came back. He did it right away. It was yeah. incredible. I mean, I couldn't believe it. And I kept asking, "Are you sure you never tried this before?" And oh no, man, I've I've seen yeah Johnny and and Ken, like in I, I've I've seen the him gorge. in yeah I've mm. seen him in the gorge. I've seen him other places, and man, just incredible, so fast and. Like they make it look like so flowy and effortless. It's hey, just wild. Talent, that's it is wild. Yeah, talent and knowledge. He's he's yeah. a good racer, so he, yeah. he knows. Yeah, and that racing background is huge. It makes yeah. a big difference. But yeah. anyways, then Niels after the event, he came over and said, "Coño, it's interesting. I gotta I gotta try this." <laughs> eventually, eventually, years after, he lived in Puerto Rico, and that's and he's you know he came over and he's part of the. Yeah, the community now. Yeah, yeah. So N NJS designs. So he started shaping uh, boards. Yeah, NJS, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, NJS. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, shaped with good vibes in Puerto Rico. Yeah, got <laughs> yeah. a little shop, and uh, he's just moving now. It he's seems like. Moving. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it. But he's um, gonna be coming back. I mean, he's just. It's not gonna spend as much time here as he, yeah. as he did. But but he's been a great sponsor for me. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, I must say, because he, you know, he really. I, I try to help him as much as possible. I'm not the best uh, uh, feedback person. I don't think so. Uh, but he believes in me, I guess, and he lends me, gives me boards. I try, so, so it works out really good. Yeah, that's cool. I'm I'm also not very good at giving feedback. <laughs> I'm trying, like with the with the North team. Mm -hmm. I'm testing out some foils, and I'm I'm trying really hard and testing out their new downwind boards, and I. I help them in some aspect of that stuff, which is really cool that I communicate with these guys with North and that level. Um, I can just make, I, I just make everything work and I, I have to concentrate really hard on what I'm feeling because sometimes I just don't know. I'm like, get on one foil to the next and I'm like, damn, they're both really good. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, you got to figure out these intricate differences of where the drag is and why you don't feel like you're paddling as fast or, mm. You know where the pop-up is and what the nose is doing where the volume is and i guess it's the same you're you're testing all these different wing boards and you have a good windy day you know if you're it's on different a, it's yeah. not necessarily the same same thing yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. and yeah great really cool boards and he, he's always looking for the next and the next take, and take trying it. to design new things and well, it's, I it's think really it, cool his, it's his passion more than yeah. his business i mean he's been shaping boards for yeah. forever he used to make uh windsurf boards for Starboard, I think. For uh, Starboard or? Cobra, Cobra. For Cobra. Cobra, yeah. yeah. I, I saw some. They are in the same place, like in Thailand and somewhere. Okay. I yeah. saw some interesting boards in his shop, and he's, he's got some really cool history as well. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, but he's a racer. What I enjoy about Niels more than anything, it's he's a racer. He, he, lo he loves racing as much as I do. Yeah. So whenever I go out or he, go out, he goes out, I got to make sure I have the right equipment because I can't <laughs> stand to lose against him. <laughs> what's your, what's Late, your lately he's been doing really well really, really. what's your what's your tally i mean i'm sure it's like on the on the side of the wall like neil's one kiko one <laughs> no you, <laughs> i mean i, I don't want to say sound uh, uh, showing off but but it's he he changes a lot of things and he's he, I, my i mean the latest uh, we've been racing he's doing very well so he's, yeah. he's improved a lot so a so, but it's all practice. Where do you get him on the upwind or the downwind? Because he's really fast going downwind. No? He's fast downwind, but I would say, my opinion, I think he gets me on the upwind. Okay. But he has good equipment now. He's, it's, it's, it's a game changer now, the equipment that's coming out. I don't yeah. know if you've you know, you've seen the double surface sails. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a game changer. It's, honestly, to me, it's kind of frustrating because uh, we were... If we had the same equipment, I think I, we are more or less the same. He gets this wing, and it's so much it's better. That, it's that ozone double-skinned one, yep. that one? Yeah, a few. And, few. and you've been using that one, too? I tried it, and I loved it. I haven't used it anymore. I haven't ordered one. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I am still deciding what I want to do. Well, I, I think I'd wait a second. If you're not in any championship or <laughs> waiting to win, True. it's. I think there's what's coming out next and what they're learning from this first wing. I, it's, I it honestly, sound, it honestly, sounds like what's going to come out could could. Uh, well, and I am not a fan of having the first uh, season of anything because yeah. <laughs> they usually learn from that. Yeah. And I, I don't want to spend the money. And well, unless it's your only option, you've got to go with Carafino. Right, right. Then, <laughs> then you, that's <laughs> it. First generation it is. Yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard to, to wait in the background and be like, oh, man, I just know that it's, it's going to get better from, from the feedback that they're getting for sure. Si. I've, I've tried it once and... It wasn't that it wasn't that windy. It was in the AWSI, um, the water sports convention in uh, in Hood River. Gorge, uh -huh. yeah, which is really cool. And it was pretty light, and it's not cool. a it's not a very good low end no, wing. I, no, exactly it's, it's what I was a, thinking. It's got to be windy to get that I thing agree. up and going. And that's when you notice the difference yeah. when it's windy. Otherwise, yeah. I'm not not 100 sold on it. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. But. Well. Hey. And but there's, there's a, I mean, it's going to change. It's, it's definitely the right way, I think. Yeah. For racing. For racing. Yeah. So yeah. now, like you said, low end, it's true. I, I agree. So, but you can carry a bigger sail much yeah. easier. You know, before I, I always used to, my five most of the time. Yeah. With that wing, I can carry it a five, seven easily. It doesn't really, it was windy and I can still carry a bigger wing. Yeah. So. It doesn't rip you off, rip no. your arms no. off and it just no. goes up wind so well. You're using the harness 99% yeah. of the time. So. Yeah. I mean, except off the wind, you don't need it. Really. Yeah, harness makes a huge difference for yeah. sure. And when, when I was kite foiling, mm -hmm. eh, I was with Willie, my good friend Willie Rodriguez, who's a super talented guy, Where, kite what, surfing. What, what's Willie doing now? It's been like two years. He hasn't gone in the water. Because he used to be out there all the time. I know, I know. He used to like launch the the foil kite like off the patio. Yeah, and know? landed like on in, our impressive. patio. You know, incredible. Yeah, but uh, hopefully he'll be back because he was fast. <laughs> he's super fast. But uh, <laughs> to be honest with you, I mean, I always think of myself just as good. I, I never think of myself less than anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not a bragging thing. It's just the way I I, I am. Yeah. Uh, and Willie. When he got Mike's lab, he just jumped. I mean, he was so much faster. He was so much better. And I, I just didn't want to spend the money. I actually, I was sponsored by Lyft, uh, which I appreciate their, their, their foils and everything. But the difference was night and day. I mean, it was, it was huge. And I, I eventually dropped out because I am not a good loser. I mean, I... I couldn't deal with you really. <laughs> I gave in. I said, "Well, I'm going to go somewhere else," and and I went to the wing foiling. Not not for that. Actually, our <laughs> our, our beach was getting smaller, and it was so much easier. It was the, technical, yeah. Yeah, the wing foiling made it so much practical. Uh, so and then I said, I saw Niels and I saw other people. I I don't remember. I think it was Niels, the first one that I saw with the with the Mike Slacks, probably. So I got in. I I bought it and. And it, it, works, it works for me so far. Is that what you're riding still? I'm still riding that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they seem to be pretty fast. They, they are, but you know what? To be honest with you, uh, I've seen other people that are just as fast with production, you know, not necessarily the mic slam. I, I think that the, it's getting, the gap is just narrowing yeah. very fast. Yeah, I mean, I've... I've uh, I've ridden them. I've ridden side by side by guys that have Mike's labs and and my production foils from North or whatever. And you know, there's there's differences in the way that they're connected and how how much like man because you can you can do you can send a foil to a factory and not every one foil is going to come out the same. Right. It's it's impossible. There could be one tail that whistles and one that doesn't right. whistle. There that's... could be little small differences because they have to shave them out. They have to you know. They have to do all this stuff in production. It's not every one person. I guess if there's one single person doing every single component of that foil, then it's going to come out the best of the best that it can, mm -hmm. right? Which makes a difference in what Mike does. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Um, but there are some very fast production foils yeah. out there, and I yeah. was I was <laughs> laughing with um, um, Ren because she kept on referring to every other foil in the market a production foil. She's like, <laughs> I've tried production foils before. She tried. To, she made it sound like garbage. <laughs> you know, anything that was not a Mike's lab, which was just hilarious. 
Uh, yeah, but no, there's some there's some fast foils out there yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think uh, it's whatever. I, I mean, I have a lot of friends, and, and if they hear this podcast, they'll know who they are. <laughs> they they have all the equipment. They 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 spend so much money in equipment, and they don't concentrate in anything. I mean, they they keep changing. Oh no no, now I go with this, and now I go, th- and and. They're not really spending the time in one thing, and it makes a huge difference, for, at least for me. Just using the same equipment. I mean, I, I'm or knowing your equipment basically. Yeah. That's what it is. I know exactly when I can use a bigger foil or a bigger wing. Yeah. What I think it's. Uh, yeah, it's nice to, you know, to be honed into your gear and look at the conditions and not, not have to make too many choices. Right. You know, and be like, uh, I know that this foil. With this wing, if it's more downwind, if it's more upwind, this with this, and you know that you can exactly. you can no, make no. A, a a right decision. <laughs> I have an issue that yeah, I go somewhere and I've got like three different brands in the back of my truck, <laughs> and I don't know which one I want to use for the day and the conditions, or I'm testing something, and you could have a you could have a bad session all of the ses- all of a sudden if your foil's not the right one or you grab the wrong wing. Like I always I always think my skills will compensate for the wind conditions because like. With kiting, I used anytime I could get a kite up, I could go, you know, mm-hmm. and I could do something. With the winging, I still have horrible sessions sometimes. Really? Like I'll go out and I'll look at the beach. I'm like, yeah, I'll pump up my four two, <laughs> and just like, just pump out there for half an hour, not getting up on foil, either the too small of a foil or under winged or whatever, and it's exhausting. Well, it's, yeah, it, lately, a, I think I've been lucky in getting the the right equipment that I like, that I yeah. personally like. not mentioning brands or anything, but. But lately, I had to replace my, the wing that I'm using, so I tried a couple of different options. And I was frustrated because, again, like you say, you're underwater trying out, and, and it doesn't really work. And I'm thinking, man, the other one worked, and this one is not working, and it's the same size, but it had nothing to do. They, they, they are different completely. Yeah. So you have to find where they work. Yeah. For example, that fuse... It needed wind, and it needs wind. It doesn't really work, I think, in in low winds. Just getting started, it's so difficult. I, I was, but if you have a bigger one, yeah, it works, and it, and it stays in shape on to to the top end. Yeah, it, it you can hold it fairly easy. So yeah. that's yeah. People can with foiling especially, you can go into deep deep uh, rabbit holes of trying to find the right equipment and. I've seen it time and time again. People come into the shop or my friends or, you know, Mickey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mickey's a great example. He's a downwind foiler. And man, he just, he gets fixated on trying to find the perfect, like there's something perfect out there that's just <laughs> going to make him magically do the run every time, you know? He's like, and then he'll try something. He's like, ooh, that's good. And he comes in. He, he's like recently just grabbed the North stuff. They, they put out some, they're putting Good out foil. some new downwind foils and he tried it. He's like, oh my God. And he'd like tried it with a smaller fuse, with a different tail, with a shim that like with this, with that mast. And I'm like, bro, hey. like, he's like, I've almost got it figured out to where I think, I think this could be it. And I'm like, you said that one month ago. No, but, uh, but <laughs> if, if, if there is somebody that, uh, that I've, um, if there's somebody that I know that makes good comments and good smart comments, it's, yeah, it's Mickey. I know. It's Mickey. Mickey's a very observant guy. And, yeah. and he can, I mean, I've see, he told me things, and then I'm in the water and realized, you know, it's exactly what he told me. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I'm, I'm happy he's, he's on some of my foils right Sick. now. It's like, right. that's a great person. When he tried it and he was happy, I was like, ah. Oh. I was like, I was happy. But if he's happy, it's got to be a good sign. <laughs> that for, is good. for downwind specific, because well, he's just a downwind foiler. Right? Well, he, he doesn't... He, he, he doesn't uh, I don't know the word in English. No, Katima. He doesn't. You know, he's. If it's good, he'll buy it. He, yeah, he yeah. doesn't. No, he has. Money's no object. He has. He'll no, get whatever. It's the best. He has no problem. Right. Yeah. Right. I've seen it. So, so he can. He can. He's tried and he's had a lot of equipment. If anybody has experience with that, it's him. Yeah. Um. So now I, I've got to ask you about the downwinding, <laughs> the downwind foiling. Um, we've all gone through it. All of us that are doing it, mm. it's it's tough. It, you gotta you gotta put in a lot of work. And I've seen I've seen a Ren <laughs> trying it and yeah, she's having a tough tough time. Yeah, she made it but look she real hard. She mentioned that in the gorge, it's not as hard. No, it's it's amazing there, man. It's <laughs> amazing. Have you been you've been to the gorge? No, never. What? No <laughs> way. 
in your uh, years? I will this year for sure. Oh man, it's so cool. Like, yeah, over there to learn how to downwind, like if you're waiting for a time to make it a little bit easier because that's, that's what's uh, holding you back from trying it or getting into it. Yeah, the gorge is amazing. I, okay. there's, there's sometimes there's waves that you don't even want to be on that they pick you up and take you down the <laughs> river. Yeah, yeah it's, nice. it's really cool. It's a, it's a great way to, a great way to get into it. And, and before we started the recording, you were, you were talking about that you guys met these guys that, with the foil drive at the boat show. And, right, right. And that's something that you were, you were intrigued by. I'd really you know. like the. I mean, I think that would be my next thing. Would be would be the downwinder for sure. Yeah, it's. Yeah, it takes a whole. Especially, especially with the foil assist. Yeah. Because I don't see myself getting into a boat or. I mean, the the only problem that I see it it, it gets complicated. The, the <laughs> it's, it's it's very complicated. I can see, you're sitting there at your house where you launch. You just launch from your patio, <laughs> you know. It's not even beachfront anymore. It's waterfront, yeah, unfortunately, well, at the it, moment. Part of it, yeah, I, I, there's more sand now. And you just launch your all your equipment just from your house, from your Same. patio. It's amazing. Yeah. And, yeah, down, <laughs> downwinding sometimes takes four to five hours for me to get a 50-minute run in because we're meeting people, we're dropping off cars, we're trying to do the run, we're paddling out a mile right, to, to, get, get, to get to the swell, swell. and then... You pick the wrong gear when you're when you're doing a downwinder. That's it. Like, like <laughs> you it? gotta you gotta go in. You gotta call your wife and be like, "Hey, I didn't <laughs> I didn't make it. You know, could you pick me up?" Mm. Or, or you even worse, you gotta call your crew and be like, "Hey, I cut it off halfway. I couldn't do it." And they're like, "You suck." You know? No. Yeah, but the benefit. It's <clears throat> it's the the ride. The ride. It, it's incredible. Thing. Yeah, it's incredible. Like there's, I, I've. I, I do I do all of these sports and for me currently yeah it's we've, we've I've mentioned it many times it's my favorite thing to do because and, it's just and what so was the satisfying. hard I mean why was it hard Be, coming from kite foiling from wing foiling what was it hard the the hard part is that you don't so there's there's two things mm -hmm. I was never a paddler so I okay, didn't know me neither. I didn't know how to paddle or be on a paddle board so I've got good balance you know so it, it didn't take me long but it I still actually watching Mickey, we went to El Perro like three days ago to paddle around some new foils and we were just paddling up in El Perro, which is a great place to learn how to paddle up on, on foil because right. they, they create like little swells that look like the same like Hood River. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we were practicing there and I was watching him very intently because I have a hard time popping up sometimes. I feel like I try to muscle it up and I was watching him tap, tap, tap and like find the right bump and, and like he made it look so effortless and I did a downwinder yesterday or was it yesterday or the day before i think i saw you i yeah. saw you out there by yourself yeah and yeah. um and it just my pop-up all of a sudden just got way better and it, i and i just every time you go out you learn something so it's it's hard because you've got to go all the way out there mm -hmm. you have to feel like you picked the right equipment for the day and the swell that's rolling and the wind that's blowing or whatever and you go way out there so you're way out to sea which for me, it, I feel comfortable out there. Like mm -hmm. you feel comfortable out yeah. there. You've been way offshore, so mm -hmm. that's not a big issue. But for some people, that is like paddling a mile offshore, and then once you hit Isla Verde, you're two miles offshore because <laughs> the bay dips in, and you're way out there. So just trying to get up and not being able to get up because you're not actually catching waves. It's like little swell, and the energy is different, and it's rocky out there. So it just takes so much energy physically mm -hmm. to get yourself up. And then finally, when you're up, you're like, oh, shit, I'm up on foil. I got to do something, you know, and then you <laughs> start for, looking you know, for, for yeah, you got <laughs> you're looking for something. You're pumping when you shouldn't be pumping. You're trying to chase backsides. You're going uphill and then you're I see. and then you lose it and you're like, oh, and you're like, I checked my heart rate uh, meter yesterday. It, my heart rate fluxes from 40 at resting to 202 this, <laughs> you know, yeah. like yesterday, the run I did 195. You know, the, the swell was rolling in north, so it was pretty onshore. The wind was, like, east-northeast. Yeah. There was a little bit of a mix of swell in there, so I had to pump, like, use a lot of energy to pump away from shore, or I'd just get blown, uh, okay, blown yeah. in. Mm. So I was, like, riding swell, pumping, riding swell, pumping, and at one point, my heart rate was, like, 175 to 195 for the whole run, mm. for 10 miles. So you, you, know? you so you, hyped up all the time. Yeah. You're hyped up, and then there's points where you relax. Now I feel a lot more relaxed, but, yeah, it's... It's getting up on foil and then being exhausted and all of a sudden being like, okay, I'm up on foil, and then you got to figure it out. And 
you can do downwind runs with your wing, mm -hmm. right? And find the swell and the pockets of energy, but then you always have this wing in your back hand and yeah. you always grab it earlier than you would think because you feel like you're coming off foil or something. But when you're out there and you're on your downwind board and you're just with a paddle, you, you can concentrate you, more. And you've got to concentrate a lot more and you can, and you really, you find facets of energy that just, they didn't, they didn't appear to you when you're riding a wing. Right. Gotcha. Because you're accelerating into them in a different speed or you're using a different foil or whatever the case may be. You just don't, you don't read it the same way because it's either not as, not as crucial like the, the speeds that I can get sitting on things that I didn't know existed, like little just crevices of bumps that I had no idea I could ride on a foil mm. until I learned how to downwind and actually properly did it after run after run. You just learn how to manage your energy on foil so much more efficient. It's crazy. And so how about equipment? I mean, what would you suggest to, for a starter? For, for a starter, you've got to get a, a downwind board, uh -huh. like a long it's got to be narrow it's got to be fast so it gets you up off, off the water a good amount of leaderage which is important um and then the foil and, and eventually you, sl you go smaller or no you can i mean what makes it i mean it, the the thing is now it's it's the same thing like like every other sport it's developing right so right. everyone's like this is the best board mm. and then two months later this is the best board. <laughs> gotcha right now it's like it used to be that it was like seven four and it was twenty one inches, so it was more stable. And then now it's they're like eight foot by seventeen okay. inches, yeah, exactly. and like the tail is like sinking in the water. No, you need more leverage in the nose. Now the nose has no volume. Like eventually, okay. just it's all kind of going through a cycle, mm -hmm. right? And then there's production boards that are coming out, and then there's custom shapers that are making innovative things, and it's slowly starting to catch up. So the best. I mean, I don't know what exists, right. but the best have to be what, you something know. Something you can paddle <clears throat> comfortably at the beginning. Something you can paddle comfortably that gets enough speed. And then just the biggest foil you feel like you could manage that's got a little bit of glide to it. Like just big fat foil, 1400, you know, something that you can just get up on very minimal swell and start getting a glide out of it. It doesn't matter that you're not outrunning the swell because you okay. don't need to okay what you really want to make sure that because if you can outrun the swell it means your foil might be too fast and then you need that much speed to get it up on foil right if you're not getting up on foil it doesn't matter how fast your foil is mm -hmm. you know so it's really important that you get like a big foil that's got a little bit of glide you know you don't want you need a little bit like a 7.8 aspect ratio or something that's got a little bit of glide to it but it's a big foil that's got good early lift and just ride as slow as you can and then you you like back up off of something and ride something and try to go as slow as you can without coming off foil mm -hmm. is where you learn the most because if you're just pumping and pumping and pumping i could yeah i no, mean no, no. i could with my cardio i could pump from here to dorado but uh, you know i but you're not enjoying you're, the whole you're thing. not in, you're not actually downwinding you're just pumping right mm -hmm. and you're going through sections that that you should re be relying on on your foil to carry you you know, so yeah, just get a big foil. You could get a foil drive, but it's not going to help you. <laughs> it's not going to help? It's going to help you get up on foil. Or go out. And go place. out. Yeah. You know, but being, going from a foil drive and then going back to like doing it without the foil drive, man, it must be so hard because, gotcha, gotcha. you know, that's, it's, <laughs> it, it takes all this energy and time to learn how to paddle up and go. Why, when you could pop yourself up with a foil assist, get up on foil and start doing a run, why would you ever go back? <laughs> okay. Like, why? Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, there's no, there's no need to go back. You know, like, the foil assist is perfectly fine if that's what you're fine doing. But if you want to be the best of the best, Kiko. <laughs> no, okay, no. Not anymore. <laughs> you, not can't, anymore. <laughs> you, you can't be foil assisting down, you know. Okay. It, it, the satisfaction also feels different for me because I can do it without... <laughs> and I, I haven't done a downwind run yet with the with the foil assist. I'm using ah, okay, it. Okay, so I'm using it to surf. Like I'm using it to push myself into swell and surf, which is really cool application. But so, but so you haven't been out there with a the foil assist yet? No, uh, okay, no, okay, not so on a downwind board and not with a paddle. I haven't I haven't tried it yet. Uh, okay. And maybe one day I'll they, try I it. I mean, this guy said I don't know. If it, I mean, I I don't know. I don't know so him that well. He said they're not even using the paddle. Yeah, so it's Ben and Paul. Maybe you met Paul then. Maybe, anyway, maybe. At the boat he said show. They're not using the paddle. They're not yeah. using the paddle. Yeah, so a lot of people also, they're going out and they're doing downwinders with like, like surfboards. 
Uh -huh. You know, so like you lay on your belly first, you get going to your knees, stand up, and then boop, you're on from foil. You don't have this big cumbersome board. And I mean, why would you need that big cumbersome board and that downwind board if you're using a foil assist? Right. Because oh, that makes sense. I don't, I don't know if you can actually get yourself up on foil with a paddle with that whole motor and the pod and everything in the water. I mean, you can help yourself by paddling to get the, the notion of you actually feeling like you're doing it, mm -hmm. but you're never gonna paddle up that thing with all that drag in the water without the motor. There's just no gotcha. way. Mm -hmm. So they, they would just either use the paddle to be like, you know, as an assist, or if, you know, if your battery dies or something, then you can then paddle you yourself something. in, or just to get yourself some momentum to save battery. I'm not sure why you would do it, or to learn how to downwind, but then if you learn how to downwind with a paddle and a motor assist, I don't know if you'd ever come back. <laughs> okay. It's really, it's really hard, you know. Um, Interesting. But yeah, I've I've got some I've got some more gear coming. I, one day I you mean, should hit me up because we should go to El Perro and everyone start would, there. Or they'll yeah, them. yeah, it's a great place. Like flat water paddle it, get into little bumps on the inside, and then and then work your way out. Because once you're out there, you could go for miles and not get on foil and not really know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, you just have to do it. You just mm -hmm. have to get out there and, and do it and, and do a couple runs. You won't even get on foil, which won't matter. You'll learn something, you'll get better at balance, and eventually you'll do it, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. So let's do Challenge. it. Challenge, I want to do it, yeah. Yeah, you should definitely do it. Uh, anything else you want to mention before we kick it off here? <laughs> no, man, it was great. It was good. Yeah, it was good. super cool. Thanks for... Time flow away I'm i know really talking yeah so it's much. been eight hours no it's not. <laughs> <laughs> an hour and a half yeah we're good okay excellent. No, great well, stories I mean, and i really appreciate you coming in because you've been thing here you've I, been mentioned a bunch and okay, your nice. story's great and what you've done for <laughs> for the for the sailing and stuff i mean you you're not modest in your skills but you're you're modest in, <laughs> you're modest in the way that you say that ah, i you know it wasn't me i didn't do anything oh, okay, but okay. you're a huge advocate of people getting into the sport and and you know like selling gear or whatever it was it was all about growing the sport and that's sure, what you do and, sure, and, and that's what i enjoy and yeah. everyone recognizes you for that so it's yeah, super cool yeah appreciate it nice thank you man Damn. i appreciate it thanks to you